Welcome to the Air Gun Show. In this week's episode, I'm going to be taking a close look at the Wolther Rain M2 Bullpup. But before that, I'm heading out on a roving shoot in Autumn Woodland. Plus, I'm going to be sharing a few tips that I hope will help you to improve your results when decoying crows and pigeons for crop protection. Right, well you've just seen me nailing a pigeon during a decoying session and in all honesty we would have been back on that field today but the machines have rolled back in so it's not safe for us to shoot then it probably wouldn't be very productive so we're going to head off on a roving squirrel shoot around the woods in a moment but I thought before we do that I will just share a few decoying tips showing you some of the footage that I did manage to get yesterday because at this time of year uh, with autumn seed drillings going in, it can be a really productive method to use. So the first thing that I would point out is the fact that decoys don't tend to work by magic. Now you can't just put them out in a field and usually rely on them attracting birds. There needs to be some kind of an attraction there in the first place that you can use the decoys to give them confidence to return. Now, yesterday the attraction was twofold. There were smashed um, corn cobs in the field from where they'd harvested a maize crop and also part of the field had already started to be re-drilled so there were seeds going in there and that's obviously why the farmer wanted me there to push the birds away for crop protection. Now in all honesty a shotgun would have been a perfect tool for the job but there was a pony paddock right next to the field so the air rifle was the perfect option for controlling pigeons and crows without spooking those ponies. Now in terms of how to set up decoys, when I'm targeting wood pigeons, I usually like to have mine in a wide sort of horseshoe U-shaped pattern and facing roughly into the wind because birds like to land and take off facing into the wind. However, I do mix up the spacings and angles just a little bit in order to make it look more natural. And I try to create a, a large landing zone within the middle of that pattern um, within comfortable shooting distance from the hide where I hope those birds are going to land. Now, if I'm targeting crows or expecting a few crows to be around, I usually set up one or two crow decoys a little bit further out in the field because crows don't usually like to land close to hedgerows. Pigeons and crows are really sharp-eyed birds and I find the best way to go unnoticed is to set up my hide against a really dense backdrop like a thick hedgerow. Now I will also dress my hide net using vegetation cut from around it, usually weeds, um, it might be clematis, it might be nettles or docks and that just helps to mask the straight edges. Now it's also important to leave a hole or a window that gives you a good view of the decoys and also clear shots at birds when they land amongst the pattern. I used to try to limit myself to headshots when shooting from a hide, particularly when using a sub 12 foot pound air gun, but it can be very tricky when birds are bobbing their heads up and down to peck at grain. So what I tend to do more often is go for the heart and lung. And that doesn't mean just taking a chest shot. You do need to be a bit more precise. And usually if the bird's presented side on, it means tucking a pellet in just beneath the fold of the wing. Now, they can tend to flap about a bit when they're hit like this initially, but they're effectively dead. It's just their engine room shutting down. So that's a few pointers that I hope will help you with your decoying. Now, the key thing is to be there when the birds want to be there. Now, you'll learn a lot for yourself through trial and error, and you do have to accept that things don't always go to plan. However, when it does go right, it can be a really effective way to control crows and pigeons for crop protection. Right, let's get going and see if we can find a few squirrels. Right, this is an area that's really worth earmarking for a bit later on in the year because we've got a pheasant release pen here. There are a lot of pheasant feeders here which are obviously gonna create food and attraction for grey squirrels. 
We've also got the conifers giving a lot of shelter. So that's going to be a really cozy place for squirrels in the winter. Now, I don't want to hang around here too long now because the pheasants are going to be going to roost soon. But there's an area just a bit further along with a lot of oaks where I know the squirrels ought to be feeding round about now. So I think we'll head over there and maybe settle in for the rest of the evening. What a great start. As expected, that one was munching away on an acorn. It was about 35 metres, which is absolutely bang on zero with this setup. Nice clean headshot, let's go and pick it up. Well, that goes to show just how effective it can be to sit, keep still and wait for those squirrels to come out. That one was only about 15 metres away now. In all honesty, I don't know where it came from. It was just sat up in that ash tree. It was frozen dead still, so I think it might have clocked us. But at such close range, a leaning shot, it wasn't difficult to thread a pellet through those twigs that were partly, partially masking it. and. Uh, Another really nice clean kill. Apologies, I don't think I was perfectly focused in on that one. I had a feeling that that squirrel had sensed us, so I just wanted to get on and take the shot in case it spooked. Um, quite a tricky shot again. Thankfully, I was rested against the tree. About 35 metres, so again, right on zero, but it was partially screened, but I just about managed to work out a clear route through to its head, and as you as you will have seen, it hit it really solidly. Another nice clean kill, but that one did dangle for quite a time now. That is a typical reflex of a squarely headshot squirrel. They, they tend to clench up, take a little while to drop, but they are stone dead. Right, well, the light's fading. The squirrels seem to have stopped moving now, and most significantly, we're getting absolutely eaten alive by midges. I'm pretty frustrated actually, because it's happened here before. I've got insect repellent in the car, but didn't bring it out on the shoot, because quite frankly, I thought it'd be late enough in the year that they wouldn't be a problem. I was wrong. Now, before we do clear off, I'm just gonna run through the kit very quickly, because I know that a lot of you like to know what I've been using. So 
The gun this evening is the Daystate Huntsman Revere and that's in the Safari edition which has got the lovely rough cut dark stock uh, with the adjustable cheek piece. Now apart from being a lovely looking air gun it's a really nice gun to shoot, it's got a regulated firing cycle, very accurate, uh, magazine fed side lever cocking and loading system and I have paired that with the MTC uh, King Cobra F2 scope. Now I've been using MTC scopes for years and I really like this one. Now generally scope cam footage doesn't really do a scope full justice but it's given me a nice crisp bright sight picture this evening. Um, as ever scopes held on with Sportsmatch scope mounts. Uh, pellet wise I've been using the domed uh, version of QYS pellets and I think that's the, that's the heavier ones which I think are 9.6 grain so it's 177 caliber 9.6 grain and as I hope you all have seen this evening this gun is really accurate with them. Now this is a sub 12 foot pound air gun basically I knew that I was going to be taking shots or certainly likely to be taking shots up into trees. Now there are instances when I will use an FAC rated air gun to take shots up into trees if I deem it as being safe but this evening it just seemed like one less thing to worry about. So it hasn't gone too badly. There are a few less squirrels now causing damage to the trees here than when we arrived. And I think also it's proven how effective it is just to sit and wait. There are still a lot of leaves on the trees it was tricky for us to spot squirrels before they spotted us and cleared off so sitting and waiting seems to have been the winning tactic right i'm going to get going and give myself and nikki a break from these midges A lovely evening in the woods there. It was just a pity about those midges. Next up, let's take a look at a super compact bullpup. If you like your air guns really compact, this could well be one for you. It's the Walther Rain M2 from John Rothery Wholesale, and it really is a super stubby bullpup. Now it's recommended retail price is £829.95 and there are a lot of features packed into this little air gun so let's take a closer look. Now I said this gun was stubby and it actually measures just 66 centimetres with the supplied muzzle brake fitted. Now it weighs just 2.9 kilos unscoped so it could be a great choice if you're planning to carry your gun around in the field over long periods. Now, its distinctly styled synthetic stock may not be to everybody's taste, but it does deliver some really useful practical advantages. That stock is ambidextrous, and as you can see, the fore-end completely encloses the front air bottle, which I think is a really nice design touch. Now, apart from giving you a comfortable and grippy hold point for your leading hand, that all-encompassing stock also makes this gun very easy to clean with a quick wipe down. Now the fore-end is nice and chunky and it's adorned with multi-directional stippling. Now it also has a Picatinny accessory rail which is perfectly positioned for bipod attachment. Moving back, the stock has a steeply angled pistol grip which is contoured for a comfortable hold and good trigger attack. Now it's adorned with the same very grippy stippling as the forend and sits in front of a large thumb hole cutaway which should comfortably accommodate large or small hands. Towards the rear of the stock you have a high cheek piece which makes for a comfortable contact point and ensures good eye alignment with your scope. Now right at the back you've got a deep wide butt pad. Now it is made from fairly hard rubber but obviously 
there's no recoil for it to soak up and it feels perfectly good in the shoulder. Scope attachment is via a Picatinny rail. Now there is the option to buy the Walther Prism 11mm dovetail rail and that retails for £59.95. Now the standard Picatinny rail is 22 centimetres long which should provide adequate clamping space for pretty much any optic you'd want to fit. The Rain M2 has a 50 centimetre barrel which being a ball pup runs all the way through the gun and back to the cheek piece. Now one of the key visible differences between the M2 and the original Rain is that on this version the barrel shroud is absent. Now what you do get is a supplied muzzle brake as you can see here. Now that barrel is also threaded half inch UNF and I would imagine that most people are going to want to take advantage of that and fit a silencer to hush it down. The design of the trigger blade is relatively basic, but I like it. It's got a moderate curve and a nice wide face. Now it's a two-stage unit and it is adjustable, although the process is quite a faff because you need to open up the stock to get to it and that entails the removal of 16 screws. However, if they're all as good as this one out of the box, you won't need to mess around with that. The first stage on this one has a uh, weight and travel, which feels just about perfect to me. That is followed by a really distinct stop and then a light, crisp and absolutely predictable second stage brake. There's a button type safety catch positioned just above the trigger blade. Now it's manually operated and I like that because it keeps things moving quickly if you need a fast follow-up shot. Now, normally you would push it across from left to right to make the gun safe and then back if you're a right-hander with your trigger finger, popping it back from right to left into the fire position when you want to shoot. Now, for some reason or other, this one's been set up for a left-hander, so it's the other way around. Now, I haven't been inclined to mess about to swap it back, but it still works perfectly well. It's positive and it does the job that it's supposed to. The Rain runs a really nice cassette type magazine which holds 10 shots in 2.2 calibre and 11 in 1.77. Now it has the length to accommodate longer pellets and slugs and cleverly can be slotted into the gun from either side which just adds to the Rain's ambidextrous qualities. Um, it's also marked with an arrow so you know that you've got it facing the right way. Loading it is really easy because there's no pre-tensioning and pellets can't fall straight through the other side when you drop them in. So with the arrow pointing downwards, you simply drop pellet, a pellet in nose first into that first bay, then turn the inner drum to reveal the next bay, drop one into there and then simply repeat that process until it's full. That brilliant magazine is driven by a really good side lever action. Now the lever is well positioned, nicely forward, and can be swapped over to the opposite side for left-handers. Now if I were to make one change, I may want a slightly chunkier drop-down handle, but that is really a very small quibble. Now the lever is actually spring-loaded, so it starts to kick back as soon as you begin that rearward stroke. Now most significantly, it's kept the shots coming quickly and reliably with absolutely no hitches during my testing. The rain is stated as having a regulated firing cycle and it was certainly pretty consistent over the chrono. Now running H&N Barracuda 15 pellets, the 2.2 caliber test gun was churning out 11.6 foot pounds with a variation of seven feet per second over a string of 10 shots and that variation opened up to 12 feet per second over a 50 shot string. Um, air pressure is actually displayed on a clearly marked gauge just in front of the side lever. The Rain M2's maximum fill pressure is 232 bar and from that you can expect about 140 shots in 177 calibre and 180 in 22. Now there are FAC rated options available in 22 and 0.25 calibres and obviously you're going to get fewer shots from them. When it is time to refill, you simply remove the plug that's positioned just behind the pressure gauge and plug in with the supplied filler probe. 
Being so compact, the Rain M2 is a nice gun to shoot from any stance and it gave a good account of itself when testing accuracy from the support of the bench. Now, running those Barracuda 15s, the test gun was practically landing pellet on pellet at 20 meters and those groups remained to be mostly ragged single holers at 30 meters. Now at 40 meters and in relatively calm conditions, groups were still remaining within 25 millimeters from center to center. So this little air gun certainly has the precision to tackle live quarry. So that's the Walther Rain M2. If you want a very compact air gun, maybe for shooting rats around cramped farm buildings or perhaps for picking off pests from within the cab of your truck, then this should be perfect for the job. And I also think it would lend itself very well to roving forays. Now, not only is it light to carry, but also its modest weight is very close to your body when you're shooting it, and that makes it lend itself particularly well to taking standing shots. Most importantly though, it's just a really impressive little ball pup at a sensible price. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode, but as ever, I'll be back again with more in two weeks' time. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe. Also, do check out the subscription offers that we have for Airgun World magazine. You should be able to find a link to that in the show description. Also, if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun membership. So... I'll be back again in a fortnight. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe. If you aren't a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.